Jeff Little from Torquedo. I'm here with John Hipsher from Bonafide, and we're going to show you how to do an installation of a Torquedo Ultralight 403 AC on the Bonafide SS127. To start off the install, we're going to walk through what's included with the motor, and then also what are some additions from Yak Attack and Bonafide that make the install a lot easier. So I have everything laid out here in terms of on this side is everything that comes with the Torquedo Ultralight 403 AC and this side are the, uh, the Bonafide and Yak Attack parts that really augment uh, this installation to make it super easy and super useful once you put it all together. Um, we have the, the pylon. Uh, so this is the motor itself. This is the bracket, which goes right onto the four bolt pattern of the inserts in the, uh, on the stern of the SS-127. Um, I have the hardware here. You actually get two sets of hardware for installing this uh, mount bracket. There's one set with the larger bolts that you're not gonna use. Um, that's for a different kayak. If you had to drill holes in a boat, um, they're much larger. Uh, the ones you're gonna be using are these smaller ones and the corresponding washers. Uh, they fit right in there perfectly. Um, you have your throttle here. Um, we'll talk a little bit later about the, uh, the Yak Attack Torquedo throttle mount. Um, you have the hardware for mounting the throttle. And let's talk about these pieces here. Um, the steering triangle is pretty important uh, and we'll discuss where you place that on the pylon with regard to is it above or below this black pivot drum. Uh, the other part that goes on there um, is this piece and in some cases you use the motor lift bar as part of it and in some cases um, you have this quick release piece as part of it. And again, that relates to you know, whether you have the steering triangle on the top or the bottom. Um, also with the Ultralight 403 AC, uh, you have this cord, which is for your lift line. It's also for your reverse lock line. And for each of those lines, you have a, you know, a small um, little knob that you tie off to the end of that. And you have track mounted hardware. Uh, this is the cleat. We use the cleat for the motor lift so that when you pull the motor up, you can snug it into that jam cleat and it stays put. For the reverse lock, because we don't want to, um, to really lock it in the, the reverse lock position, um, it's just a line guide to help you always know, hey, it's right there. The other pieces, um, you have these <coughs> um, these clips that two of them attach to your steering triangle. One of them attaches to the reverse lock, and the other one attaches to the top of your motor lift bar. The last piece is just a simple cotter pin, and this is um, in case somebody did not want to put um, foot control steering on their setup if they wanted to, um, to just fix the motor in a position, it just goes through, um, through the steering triangle and drops down into that pin. But since we're not gonna be doing that install, we're gonna have a very maneuverable SS-127 once it's motored up, uh, we're not using that cotter pin. Um, here's some of the tools that we're going to be using. We have a drill because we're going to be doing installation of basically rudder lines uh, to steer the motor. Um, we have a couple Allen keys. There's a four millimeter and a three sixteenths Phillips head screwdriver, a pair of scissors just to cut the, the tubing here, um, and the, the clear silicone just to make sure that it's a nice tight waterproof seal there. So that's everything that comes with the Torquedo Ultralight 403 AC. I'm gonna have John hop back in here and go over the Bonafide and Yak Attack components necessary for this install. To make this install easier on your Bonafide SS-127, I have a couple components from Yak Attack and also the motor steering kit from Bonafide.
The motor steering kit in conjunction with your stock foot braces on your Bonafide SS127 create the perfect combination for a great steering setup with your new Torquedo. For Yak Attack products, one of the items that we're going to use today is the GT175 gear track. We've got two pieces of that, that one's going to be installed on the left and then one's going to be on the right side of the Ford gunnel just in front of the angler. That's going to give you the ability to mount your throttle mount with your Torquedo throttle and then the other side is going to be perfect for your jam cleat for your lift and lower line and then also combined with your reverse lock. Another Yaktac item that we're going to use with this install is going to be the tie down eyelets. So these make it nice and easy to where we're going to guide the lift line and the reverse lock around the stern tank well on the SS127. It attaches using the stock gear track in the back and it's going to make it to where it's it nice and really clean install and guide those lines where we want them to go. And a new item for Yak Attack was going to be the Torquedo throttle mount. That throttle mount, very simple to attach. All it has is uh, two screws that attach in the back plate on your Torquedo throttle. And it's based off the Yak Attack lock and load system. So there's going to be a lot of articulation, a lot of security, a lot of adjustment. This is all around a real simple, very easy device that pairs nicely with the Torquedo system. So the last item we're going to use in this install is going to be the motor steering kit from Bonafide. This allows you to use your stock foot braces in conjunction with steering line so you're able to control your Torquedo motor. Included in the Bonafide motor steering kit is going to be a couple unique pieces. The first unique piece that makes this kit special is going to be the line tensioning device that attaches to the back of your stock foot braces. What this allows is adjustment on the fly whether you're in the high or low position in the SS127 and easily allow you to adjust how much line you have out on those steering controls. So if you do need to make some adjustments or maybe someone's using your boat on a different day and you swapped out boats, it uh, gives them the ability to perfectly adjust that tension on the fly without needing any tools and a real simple twist to adjust movement. Also included with that kit is going to be your Spectre cable. So you get two lengths of those, one for each side. Really nice cordage that's going to last a nice long time. The last component of the Bonafide motor steering kit is the three 16 inch tubing and some steel cable to help with the install. So let's start with the easiest part of the install, is just putting the bracket on there. You have the four inserts in the hull of the SS-127, you got the corresponding four holes. Um, this is a 3 16th uh, Allen key that you're going to need. I'll go ahead and get the rest of these on there with their washer. We'll leave them a little bit loose until we get them all seated. I will say that I have seen some of these not line up perfectly with the inserts and that has to do with the molding process or the demolding process of each kayak. I've only seen one like that. And if, if that were the case with your particular boat, what I would tell you is to get a drill bit or a Dremel and grind out the one that isn't quite lined up. But this one lines up. So we're just gonna tighten it down. All right, that's it. Now we're gonna talk about how you put the pylon into the mount and the, the black pivot drum, but more importantly, these two parts, which goes on first and which goes on second, and which hardware is on which of these, either the steering triangle or this spacer. Uh, in this particular case, we know that the lines to steer the motor are gonna be coming out top side. They're gonna come up here. So we want the steering triangle up here. We don't want it below. If you had a boat where it was coming out at the bottom, then you would want it down below. 
the motor lift is always on top even if the steering triangle is below and if that were the case you would use this spacer but because the spacer is going to be below we put the quick release hardware in that spacer and we put the fixed hardware on the motor lift and the steering triangle. So right now, I'm gonna take the motor cable, slide it up through the spacer. just snug that down for now. This is important later when we discuss the stow function. And then we're going to put next we're going to slide the motor cable up through the pivot drum which brings the motor pipe up through. And I'll just hold that in place with my knee. And then I can put <clears throat> the steering triangle and motor lift bar. Now this is important. This portion of the steering triangle needs to be in contact with the black pivot drum. The reason is it's a spacer and that allows the steering triangle to clear it. If it were flipped the other way, uh, the wings of the steering triangle would come in and actually hit the frame here, thus limiting your, your range of rotation. I'm going to slide the spacer all the way down and bring this up into the stow function and then I'm going to get my, it'll be a four millimeter Allen key and a socket to tighten this. Okay, in order to tighten the motor lift bar in the steering triangle, I have the four millimeter Allen key and then a eight millimeter socket. Before I do that, I want to just make sure that the skeg and the prop and everything is aligned with that motor lift bar. For this particular boat, you do want this all the way up. You want the full length of this pipe. It's a fairly tall sterned kayak. In fact, when I was working uh, with the product engineers at Torquedo on developing this, uh, I had to make sure that they gave us an extra 10 centimeters of length specifically for this boat. So you do want the steering triangle all the way up. Okay, let me tighten that nice and snug. And we're just gonna leave this in the stowed function for a little while and we're gonna move on to setting up our motor steering lines. All right, our next step involves the drill. So if you look back here, uh, it has little indentations where you can use your 3 16 inch drill bit and drill the holes. You got one on either side, and then we're gonna go up to the front and I'll show you where you're drilling holes there. <laughs> You'll need to understand where the spectra cord is headed once it comes out of the hole here to find the right placement point for it. If you look at the pedal, there's a very small hole right up in this corner and that spectra threads right in there. And we'll come back to the spectra cord, but if you can see the straight line of it coming back, it's going to enter the hole right here.
Okay, in the motor steering kit, you're gonna have three different materials coiled up like this. This is the tubing. This is what we're actually gonna thread through there. Uh, but before we do that, we're gonna put this cable inside that. Now I don't wanna confuse folks because some folks use this cable as the actual steering cord. In this installation, we're not using it as the cable that steers that you'll leave it in the boat. We're gonna use the Spectra cord as your steering cord. We'll put that aside. The cable in this case, you really just insert in the tubing as a means to stiffen up the tube. The reason you want the tube stiffened up because as soon as you put it in, it's been coiled like this for a long time, it wants to go inside the boat and curl around in there. So this just gives it a little bit of rigidity so that when you start threading it through, that it keeps pointing towards the back. Typically, you know, people do this, have done this installation before on other boats and, you know, you just use the bare tubing and you get a coat hanger and reach in, you know, clothes hanger and grab it and pull it out. But stiffening up the tubing and it helps to actually have somebody hold the other end and straighten it out to get this thing in there. So... Now that you have it coming out the end, you can start threading it through the hole that you've just drilled. And you just feed it so it goes to the back. I'm gonna make sure that I can get my hands on it through the hatch, at the rear, the rear access hatch uh, before I take the, the cable out of there. And once I take the cable out, um, then we'll make use of this lighter to mushroom the end of it so that it doesn't pull through. Okay, I'm just removing the rear access hatch. These Phillips heads. Pop that off, it's got a nice gasket there. And now, I do not feel it. So, in some cases, you're gonna need to get a, a metal clothes hanger, um, reach it in there, have a little hook on it, and pull it out. I wasn't able to find a clothes hanger, but I did find this fairly stiff uh, cable here. And I'm just hooking this end so as it goes up in there, it'll find that tubing, grab it, hook it, and bring it back in. Now, one thing that you need to do before you put it up there, whether you use a clothes hanger or some cable like this is to straighten it out because you don't want it traveling up there on a curve either. Um, you definitely want to keep the tubing all on one side of the scupper holes in particular. You don't want the tubing to loop around a scupper hole and then come back in. Everything needs to be on this side of the scupper posts. If this doesn't work, the next step is to get gravity to work with you and lower the stern of the kayak just so it's, you know, it's more predisposed to come in the direction you want it to. I have the full length of it in there, and what I'm doing is just twisting it so hopefully it gathers. And that's a no. You keep, keep trying. I guess the good thing is 
We're all fishermen, so we've learned patience, theoretically. Okay, thus far I've been unsuccessful in hooking it with this. Uh, I think usually I do a better job with a, uh, a metal clothes hanger, but that wasn't the right material. So we're going to use gravity to help us, and we're actually going to use this three ounce weight attached to it. Uh, we're going to go in the front hatch and tape this three ounce weight to help it slide down this side so that we can reach in here and grab it. Okay, we've put the tubing in here and I can easily reach up and pull the end of it out. And what we're going to do is attach with just some tape this uh, three ounce bell sinker. And that's just going to help it find its way down to the bottom. And we'll do the same thing for the other side. Okay, we're good to go. All right, I'm gonna remove the kayak stand and lower it. And then I'm gonna go to the other side and actually just tilt the entire kayak that way. Success. So we'll take the weight off, we'll take the tape off, and I'm gonna reach up inside and bring it out through this hole that we just drilled. Okay. All right, let's repeat it for the other side. We have all four ends coming out, two on that side, two on this side. I'm just gonna cut the adhesive from the, uh, the tape off of there. And we're gonna mushroom the head because if you were to tug on this line right now, it's totally smooth and cylindrical, it will pull through. So you don't want it to be cylindrical, you want it to be mushroom shaped. And I'm just putting that that lighter, that flame right next to it, and then I'll just kind of push on the side of it. Another trick for making it mushroom out is to use a, a machine screw, and the threads dig into that and really make the cylindrical shape um, just triangulate out at the end, so. I'll do that in a moment. Now that that's flared out, we're gonna get just a little bit of the clear silicone and beat it up right underneath where it flared out.
I don't need a lot, but I do want it all the way around. And that way, when we pull it in from the other side, it draws it into it and just makes a really nice seal right there. That's it. I could force it and actually pull it through there. So don't overdo it. You just want it to seat nice and clean there. That's ready to go. Now we gotta do the other side and we'll do the right side of the boat as well. When you already have one side done and you come to the front, a pair of vice grips may be helpful in just grabbing it and pulling it forward just a hair, not so much that it comes through, and then you just lock it in place. And then you can cut that without fear of it jumping through the hole and losing everything that you just did. Take the screw out, beat up my silicone all the way around. And because I've pulled it just a little bit, it should be, it should draw in to the hull. Side's done. part about the screw is that if you mushroom it too hard you may actually seal up the end so if you're trying to run lines in and you can tell that the spectra cord is at the end of the tube and it's not going through you can use the screw to screw it in there pull it back out heat it and you know just do it over again so Using the screw to pull it back out and rework it is a good trick as well. But I think this one's ready to go. Let's get some silicone. That drew right in. All right. I have already done one side just to kind of show you what the end result is going to be. Uh, we have the spectra coming out of the tube. It goes through a small hole here. And then before you install this part on the back of the pedal, you run it through this hole. It's actually going to be this way on this side. You run it through the hole. It wraps around this spindle and through a, just a tiny little hole there and you tie an overhand knot, and then using the, the two screws, there's a short one and a long one. I've got the long one here in my hand, and the long one goes here, and the short one goes there. So, but let me start with just running the, uh, the Spectra all the way to the back, and then this other side will run it through the small hole in the foot pedal.
really do like the Spectra as opposed to the 16th um, diameter, you know, braided steel cable. Uh, the Spectra has like a waxy coating to it and it just makes for really smooth steering. Now, if you try putting the Spectra through there and it just kind of jams for a second, the end of the Spectra may be frayed and it might help just to give it a fresh cut and restart. It is a tight fit, but if you jam it in there with a clean cut, it'll eventually go. Need another clean cut. Here it goes. Okay, it's gone through that small hole and it's going to go through this hole here in this little leg that kicks out. And then we bring it through there. On the spindle, we bring it through that little hole. And then it's just a little overhand knot. And uh, I like to pull it in snug. I'm gonna trim it, because I don't like any extra slop in there, and I will singe it so that it doesn't fray anymore. Okay, so now that that's on there, I'll give it a couple turns to wind a little bit of line on there. And we'll go ahead and put short screw, long screw, short screw, long screw. And I guess it's that way just because the pedal itself isn't, it doesn't have material that deep on this, this end of things. That's good that that's started. Now, as I, we've mentioned before, this is important, the adjustability of when you go to from the low seat to the high seat, you're actually going to draw up some of this line, which actually brings the foot peg closer to you. So you'll be, you'll have a range of say from there to there in the high seat, whereas in the low seat, you would want it from say there to there. So in order to set the lengths of the spectra, what I like to do is to go all the way to one extreme of steering. So pick a side, you know, and push that foot peg all the way forward done that up here and we go all the way till it gets to the end and then we bring it back a hair because well you just don't want a hard hard stop on that and I've got the motor the steering triangle swung all the way in this direction and with that steering all the way forward this steering triangle swung all the way this way. I'm just tying a knot and don't ask me what kind of knot. It's some sort of slip knot. I kind of make it up every time I do this. But it works because Spectra is a, you know, it's good material to work with. It's pretty easy. And if you get it wrong and you haven't trimmed it, 
you can let out a little bit. But again, the nice thing about the, the part that we've already installed up front is that I've already got two or three turns on that to give a little bit of extra back. So I feel confident that this is all I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna cut my excess and be done with it. All right, so doing the other side, we're gonna do the same thing in reverse. So I'll go ahead and put that through there and then move this foot peg all the way forward. Some folks, if you're, if you're doing it and you don't have somebody there to help you out, uh, you may want to actually use a clamp to clamp it in place because you don't want to, um, in tying it, do this and not know that you did that. So I can visually look at it and say, yep, yeah, I'm good. All the way forward, back maybe half an inch, pick up my slack, tie the knot. All right, and I just singed the ends just so the Spectra doesn't have any, any fraying and unraveling of that knot. So let's look and see how that steers when I hop up here. Nice rotation, almost 180 degrees. It's about as close to 180 as you can get. Okay, now we need to do our <clears throat> reverse lock line, which is here. This function is actually something that allows you to go in reverse, whereas if you just use the throttle and push it into reverse, the motor, the propeller will lift itself up out of the water, and you don't want to do that. So this, um, you pull this cable forward, and it locks here so it won't come up. You don't want that to be the case normally so that when the reverse lock relaxes and you hit something, it needs to be able to swing up. So if you're in open water, pull the reverse lock and back it up. So we're gonna run that line and we're gonna run the motor lift line. And we need to first put some gear track in up front. So John's gonna jump in and do that last part of the install along with the Torquedo throttle mount. So with this step of the install, we're gonna install the Yak Attack GT175 gear track. And with this specific install, we're gonna do a four inch piece. And on this left side, I reel left-handed with bait casters and also spinning gear. So I'm gonna wanna have my throttle, my throttle mount mounted on my left side. So that's gonna be the, the specific purpose of this gear track on the left gunnel. So with the install of the GT175 gear track, we are gonna use a 1 8 drill bit. And with this, with this placement, it actually fits in really, really nice and perfectly. You're gonna to wanna to get the gear track as far up to this wall right here, and it gives you the ability to put all four screws in. So that's gonna make an, for a really nice install, um, but also not nice and safe and rigid. And I'm trying to keep, keep as much in line on top as that gun as possible, so nothing's gonna catch it on the side. So there's about a, a perfect place, and you'll find it where you can, most of it's gonna be above the gunnel. So with that, I'm gonna put it in line and I'm going to take my drill and I'm gonna do just one hole first. And when you do that, when I install gear track, I typically, I will let the bit do the work. I won't apply a ton of pressure because all of a sudden when you get through, it's gonna go all the way down and you have the potential of damaging your track or your drill. So I'll typically take it nice and easy and let the bit do the work. So after doing that first hole, I'm gonna get my first piece of hardware. 
And then always when securing the hardware, I'm gonna use a hand screwdriver. So with the hardware that's being used with this gear track, it's gonna take a little bit to get the first rotation, so I like to apply some downward pressure. And then tighten it in place. So with that, I'm gonna leave a couple threads loose so we can put the other ones in place and then do a final rotation and tighten all of those screws. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the opposite hole on this. So I'm gonna drill not the adjacent hole on the left to right, I'm gonna go completely opposite side of the track and that's gonna hold that positioning to where instead of drilling all the holes individually, I'm gonna do that last, this, this one right here on the opposite side and that's gonna allow me to put one more piece of hardware and then I'll drill the next holes simultaneously. since I've got those two holes drilled and also with the hardware installed opposite on the gear track, I'm gonna go do two of these and then insert and tighten that hardware. And with that, I'm gonna give it one final tightening, not too tight, and I wanna strip out the holes, but very much like how you would tighten the lug nuts on a car. I'm gonna rotate and then go a diagonal, tighten that, and then go until they're all nice and snug. All right, now that we got that gear track on, we're gonna do the right side, and then we'll get to the attachments. Now that we have the Actac GT175 gear track installed, on the left side is where I'm gonna mount my throttle and also the reverse lock. So this is gonna be my personal boat for the year and I'm an oddball, so bait casters, spin reels, I'm always gonna reel those and crank those with my left hand. So my right hand's always on my rod, so I want that quick ability to have my off hand be my motor control. So with that, we're gonna use the Yaktac throttle mount that's based off the lock and load mounting system. So with that, all I'm gonna do is loosen the T-bolt, kind of like very much like a bottle cap, loosen it up, and then that T-bolt, I gotta do is inline the T-bolt with the two track teeth, and that is gonna come perfectly on to that GT175 track there. So all I gotta do is tighten right, and that tightens down. So I'm gonna tighten that up. And then to attach the Torquedo throttle, what I'm gonna do to make it a little bit easier, I am gonna remove that plate from the armature. So take out the spring, take out the bolt, and then included with the Torquedo throttle mount from Yakutak is gonna be the correct hardware, so. And to do the install with your Torquedo throttle and the Yakutak throttle mount, I'm gonna flip it over and you'll see two holes right here. You're gonna wanna line up your mounting plate with those holes and simply drop in the hardware and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to hand tighten that. I'm 
tighten those up till snug. So once I have that on, I'm gonna take the armature from the lock and load mounting system and then line those teeth up. And then on the bare side is where I'm gonna drop in my carriage bolt. And then that leaves an area for your spring and then your knob. So once snug, all you have to do is make sure that the trigger is in the open position and that is gonna go right on the base and you're ready to go. Squeeze the trigger on the lock and load mounting base and then it's gonna allow you to rotate and then position as you want. So for me, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get a little bit more adjustments tomorrow on the water and see what I like, where I like it, but I'm gonna take it down at an angle where I can have it out of the way a little bit. So I'm gonna tighten that up and then we will attach the um, power cable and then also the safety once we're ready to go. So behind that area, I'm gonna put the reverse lock. So to install the reverse lock, I'm gonna take the track nut that's installed on the bottom and I'm gonna slide that right into the track. Once I like that positioning, I am going to just tighten down that piece of hardware and then we'll be ready to go. and that leaves plenty of room for my throttle mount. So I'm gonna insert that T-bolt, tighten down the knob, drop it on top, lock the trigger. With both of those components installed, we are going to run the cordage and tie the knot to finish off the reverse lock. So after playing with a little bit of configuration with the throttle mount and the reverse lock, uh, and then also consulting Jeff, who, you know, who's had his plenty of install time and seat time on the water with his SS-127, I'm actually gonna reverse the positioning to where I can have the throttle mount be a little bit farther back, um, out of the way of the cockpit, um, but also have uh, the eyelet and the hole for the reverse lock on the outside. So I'm gonna tighten that up and then we will will put the throttle mount back on. And now you can see how it's, the articulation is gonna be a little bit farther back to be probably a little bit more of a natural position when sitting in the seat, but also leave a lot of room in the cockpit still open so you can stand, get up, sit back down, or also access anything in your dry pod or up front. So that's how we're gonna set it up and uh, see how it does in the water. And the next step is gonna be um, running the line. So included with your Torquedo Ultralight 403 AC is gonna be one section of cordage. So with this, it is going to accomplish two different things. One of them is gonna be the reverse lock and the other one is gonna be your motor lift. So with that, I'm going to cut it approximately in half. take my lighter so the ends don't fray. So now that I have my section of cordage cut in half to two sections, I'm gonna take the black knob, which I'm gonna use for my reverse lock. And first thing I have to do is take the end and go through that track mounted eyelet. So I'm um, gonna take that. And then with the actual knob itself, uh, you wanna go through the side that doesn't have the deep indention. So you're gonna run through the back end and all you gotta do is simply tie an overhand knot and I'm gonna leave a little bit, not too much of a tag in, but I'm gonna leave a little bit on there and then pull it through and then cinch it tight. So it's gonna make for a really nice, clean install with that knob. And that is going to butt up right to that eyelet and be nice and easy to grab if I wanna set that reverse lock. So we're gonna work our way towards the back of the boat, install the track mounted eyelets and then hook it up to the motor. So 
So now that I've installed the knob and ran the line through the track mounted eyelet, one thing that we're gonna add in the back of this Bonafide SS127 is gonna be the tie down eyelets from Yagatech. These are really nice, simple eye bolts that attach to the track. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna help guide the line around the tank well and back to the motor mounted in the stern. So included in that kit, you're gonna have an eye bolt, a track nut, and then a knob. So all you gotta do is take the knob and insert that eye bolt from the top and just rotate it right to tighten. And then with that track nut, all you gotta do is I typically take the flat side, there's gonna be one that's flat, one that has a little raised area around the threads. I'm gonna take the flat aspect of that track nut and I'm gonna put that on the bottom so the threads will be facing upwards. So I'm gonna give that one or two turns of threads and then I'm ready to install on the track. So we'll move in the back and how I'm gonna want it, I'm gonna want this to where it goes all the way in the back just to have the most direct connection, give more access to the tank well, whether I'm putting a crate in the back here, a cooler or a live well. Um, so I'm gonna attach that eye bolt right to the back. So what you wanna do is just hold the, the eye bolt section in place and then tighten your knob. is ready to go. I'm just gonna take the tag end of my reverse lock and run it through. Once I run it through, the next step is gonna be running it through the eyelet right here on the front of my mount. So once I get that nice and tight, then I'm gonna take the quick clip here and run it through and then tie the same knot that Jeff did on the um, back end of the steering cables right here. So it's kind of a simple slip knot. So I'm gonna loop it once and then I'm gonna do two outside wraps. And then that's gonna allow me to come through the opposite side and then out. Nice simple slip knot. It's gonna have some nice tension there. And then we can play with the tension and how tight it is once I hook it up right here. And get that nice and snug. Work it up along the side and then find that sweet spot of where I'm gonna wanna mount that, so. All right, so now that I've got my slip knot tied in the back, what I'm gonna wanna do, I'm gonna wanna leave a little bit of slack. That gives me the ability to grab it nicely, but also it's gonna lock in place. So I left about, about six inches up front towards that knob, so. I'm gonna take that and then do one last cut. And then do the, take my lighter and make sure the end isn't fray. All right, once we got that installed, let's move to the right side and then we're gonna do the motor lift. All right, one of the final steps we're gonna do is install our jam cleat for our lift line. So I'm gonna take that and just make sure that the, the track nuts have a little bit, little bit of space to insert them into the GT175 gear track. So I'm gonna take that, slide it right in, make sure they're lined up, and then take that Phillips head to tighten it down. Once snug, we're ready to take a tag end of our cordage and run it to the back side. once through. Do the same thing with the knob. I'm going to insert it through the flat side and then have access from my nut pocket on the top. So I'm going to run that through, tie a simple overhand knot. Snug down. And I'm ready to go with that knob there. So with this install, we are gonna run it back through the eyelets on the right side of the tank well. And then in the end, we're gonna to wanna to leave about 10 to 12 inches of 
tag end to be able to give the ability for me to grab it in that high position or low position in this bona fide SS 127. So now we're going to move back and install the track mounted eyelet. So same thing with the eyelid before, I'm going to take that eye bolt and then my threaded knob and I'm going to take the head of that eye bolt and run it through that knob. I'm going to tighten it all the way up. I'm going to have the flat side of that track nut facing downwards and that's going to allow me to thread into the track nut and then align and insert into the track. I'm gonna hold the top of that eye bolt and then tighten the knob down and then orient the opening to the balance turn. All right, so once tight, I'm gonna take the tag end of our lift line, run it through that eyelet, and then I'm gonna run it through once tight run it through the front of my motor mount and that's going to attach right to the top using that clip. So I'm going to attach my clip first and then run the tag in through. Then I'm going to move back up to the front, hold this a little bit and then I'm going to give myself that 10 to 12 inches that I wanted. So it's about 10, 11 inches right there. So I'm gonna leave that and then I'm gonna tie that same slip knot that we tied before. So I'm gonna loop it around once and then give myself two outer wraps and then back through that opening right there and then snug it down. Now that that's snug, I'm gonna take my scissors and do one last cut on the lift line. Take my lighter, make sure it doesn't fray. See how it looks up front. Yeah, it's about right, about 10 to 12 inches. And that's gonna be our lift lower line right there, so. So now that we've got our slip knot tied on our lift line, the next thing to do is grab our battery and hook everything up. So now that I have my battery ready to go, I'm gonna put it in the back of my SS127. And with this tank well, how it was designed, kind of its octagonal shape, it leaves a lot of room in the front and also in the back, but it leaves a, a perfect little cubby up front to lay my battery in. And also the bungee helps kind of hold it in place so it's not moving around while on the water. So the first thing I'm gonna do is attach the power cable. And when tightening this, it should be very, very easy to tighten. It should go on very, very easy, make sure that it's full fully seated before you even start to rotate the threads. And if it is difficult to rotate, you are cross-threading your threads. So you wanna make sure that it's fully seated before you attempt to tighten those. Now with that attached, I'm gonna take the next cable from my throttle and attach that one. Same thing with this one, a little notch on the bottom. You wanna align that, insert, press down, make sure that it is fully seated, ready to go before you tighten those threads. So now that we've got our battery and our complete install is ready to go, so the next thing to do is take it out on the water. I'm probably gonna you know, put the seat in it, sit in it, see how the throttle feels in its position, see how the lift line and my reverse lock feel. And then after that, we're gonna try to catch some fish. the efficiency 
of your Bonafide SS127 with your Torquedo Ultralight 403 AC, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna wanna move the trim pin, that, that trim adjustment pin, to that second notch. Now what that's gonna do with the, the height of the stern of the SS127, it's gonna set it up at the, the best performance angle possible that's gonna get you the maximum efficiency out of your Torquedo. So now that I've had about about two and a half days so far on the water, one with my new Bonafide SS127, uh, but also with the new Torquedo Ultralight 403 AC, it's kind of opened up my mind to you know possibilities and you know what I'm capable of for maximizing some time on the water and. You know, what we're fishing today, Sandy River Reservoir, I mean, it's not the biggest reservoir in the world. I mean, it's it's sizable. You're not gonna be able to fully paddle it in one day, um, but in a, a day and a half, uh, we've literally covered almost every inch of this place and uh, really grinding and grinding away to find some fish. And uh, it's truly, it, it kind of changes my perspective on kayak fishing. You know, I think it's gonna, you know, insert some fun back into it just because, you know, I, I'm not getting a lot of time to fish nowadays and I was I was home, I think, six days last month and, and so this is really gonna make me, if I've got a free weekend or, you know, free hour before, you know, going to work in the morning or a couple hours after work before sunset, it's gonna give me the ability to really truly dissect, a, you know, even a fishery like this that's not the biggest thing in the world, it's gonna make me, give me the ability to get where I wanna go, fish how I wanna fish, and uh, kind of change how I approach kayak fishing.